Hey, good morning, Mercy Road. Everybody give it up for Eric Maitland, who forgot his mic. So I get to welcome you. My name's PJ. As he, Eric said earlier, I am the freshly dubbed Michigan uh, Road uh, worship uh. pastor. Are you on? Are you turned on? Check, check. Welcome, there we go. Kroger Plus Card member. Please scan your first item and place it in the bag. <laughs> That's my mic check. You do most time. of your shopping at Kroger? <laughs> do I? <laughs> do you? I bought a t-shirt at Kroger last time I was there. Did you know you could do that? <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, this is the first worship pastor preach-off, maybe, uh, definitely in Mercy Road history, but yeah. maybe in, like, history ever, because there are really important reasons they don't yeah, let worship pastors have speaking they microphones. They discourage things like this from yeah, ever happening. It's, it's, we haven't had a Memorial Day service in, like, years. Really? We do, like, I'm this new. RV thing sometimes, or we'll do a video, but look at all you people. What good Christians. Did the race Coming get canceled? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Did the race get canceled? That's an actual oh. question. I don't know. I mean, I knew nobody, we were good Nobody in here cares because they're no, here exactly. instead of at the race. That's really great. They're like, is there like a track race or something? We have been talking about Proverbs for the last four weeks. This is mm -hmm. week number five, right? Yep. And so up here on the screen, I'm totally taking over your intro because oh, you You're weren't great. ready. Yep. Uh, the, uh, the last four weeks, we've talked about these different topics. Living wisely now with Pastor Darren. Pride keeps us from living wise. Uh, community is key to wise living with Luke and Ashley Edgerton. And then last week, Josh spoke about how to leave a legacy of wise living. Yeah. I thought you did great. And you just, I did good. You just did great. I just did great doing that. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk about joy and the joy of wisdom. It's a really important topic that as it we is. launched off into prepping for this week, we realized there's a lot of joy that can be found in Proverbs. And so Proverbs 17, 22 says, a cheerful heart is good medicine. Um, I did not, this makes me a bad pastor, I did not necessarily realize that came from the Bible. I thought it was just an old wives' oh, tale. Oh, yeah. Like an Thank apple you. a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> that is not in the Bible. Cleanliness actually. next to godliness. Yeah, actually, yep. uh, my mom wrote that one in my Bible when mm -hmm. I was a kid. So it yeah, was in my Bible. There. Oh, I think one of the most important things we can do today, one of the most spiritual things we can do is have some fun in church. Agreed. It's kind of weird to laugh in church, isn't it? But I'm going to 100% give you permission right now to laugh in church. So ready? One, two, three, go. Uh, I didn't think that was going to work. We didn't do that in that Most service. people did That's that forced laugh like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do. But you know what I think really brings a lot of joy and brings a lot of laughs? Dad jokes. Dad now you jokes. have an unfair advantage when we do this. I do. I don't have any children. No, you don't have any. Ch Did you All say right. children? I just saving time. Children. <laughs> you yep. took the D out to save time. Yep. That's funny. Yep. Uh, so, but I do have two children. We'll talk about them in a minute. But I figure since we can't do dad jokes, since you don't have any children, we would just do bad jokes. Yeah, we, I can do that. I've okay. got those for days. They're so, kind of the same thing. So in the typical dad joke style, we're going to okay. see who can make each other laugh, and hopefully you guys laugh too, but complete 100% permission mm -hmm. to laugh at us and not just with us. Um, three jokes apiece. Okay. Whoever laughs the most loses. Right. And you're vertically challenged, so you can go first. Oh, is that a little short joke? I it see. was. I was actually going to do this. I was going to do the rest of my message from my knees, because then the camera angles would be better. Um, but you know what? God sent the flood to destroy the Nephilim, you giant. <laughs> Good Lord. I know, I know. I'll and David what. beat Goliath. I get it. All right, I'll go first, though. I think okay. I need all the help I can get on this. Okay. Um, let me pick one I haven't done yet. I, I have to get new ones because he's heard some of these the last services. I've been telling some of these okay. for about 20 years, so. All right. These aren't good, just so you're ready. Okay. What does a nosy pepper do? It gets jalapeno business. Jalapeno business. I didn't oh, say it right. jalapeno I business. Okay. Did you laugh or you just kind of go? I understand. It actually took me a minute to think about it. That was yeah. why I was. Okay. It was it was the nose part that was. The okay. Joke. Um. Okay. I know a lot of jokes about unemployed people, but none of them work. <laughs> it's a slow burn. It's <laughs> like slow it burn. takes a minute. Like <laughs> that's kind of mean. Hmm. Knock, knock. Who's there? Soup. Soup who? Superman. That's the worst joke I've ever heard. Superman. It's great. Yeah, oh, it's man. Bad. I love it. Um, oh, wow. Did takes you, a minute did to you come hear, back. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear, hear the one about the restaurant that they're planning for the moon? Mm -mm. It'll have great food, but no, no atmosphere. 
I'll think about that one. That was know, real we bad. Do. We need the snare hits. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think you may have heard this, but I'm telling it anyway. Okay. And Jesus said, come forth and receive everlasting life. But John came fifth and only received a toaster oven. <laughs> wow. You're an oak. <laughs> I'm an oak. That's, I've never been called mm-hmm. that before. Is that a tall joke? It's from Tombstone. Oh. Um... This one time, I saw this wino, and he was eating grapes. And I was like, dude, you have to wait. <laughs> That's so bad. But you laughed. I did, because <laughs> so, I got with, it just with, at the right time. With like, one point. That was the third uh, one, right? With one point. Can we have one more? Can we have one more? Okay. Okay. All right. I got I to gotta dig deep here. Um, since you just brought up winos, that's not appropriate. Josh would not let me say something like that, so I'll go ahead and step it up. Um, <laughs> what does Miley Cyrus eat for Thanksgiving? I don't know. Twerky. <laughs> that is amazing you didn't laugh at that. That's a really good joke. I really want to laugh at that, though. <laughs> Twerky. Oh, oh my I gotta, goodness. I gotta find a good one now. That was hard. Yep. Um, Over time. What do you call an elephant that doesn't matter? And irrelevant. <laughs> Except I said it wrong. That really wasn't funny then because I Still said it wrong. Let funny. me do another one. Oh my gosh. What did the buffalo say to his son after he was leaving for school? What? Bye, son. <laughs> All right. All right. That's I good. think I still win. I think you still I think win. Because that one, even but though I took two you're extra. You're just really good at these dad yeah, jokes. Yeah. Your kids hear these? Uh, they I mean, you do, tell actually. Them, like, What's day. great is that my kids actually oh, think I'm hilarious. Goodness. So that's actually wow. really, really fun. Amazing. Um... Doesn't it feel good to laugh in church? Like, we've been talking about some heavy stuff with Proverbs the last couple of weeks, and I just think it's really fun for us to laugh. So after that, I think we could really use some prayer. So let's pray. Uh, God, thanks for today. Thank you for the, the gift of laughter. Thank you for the gift of your wisdom and how all of that brings hope. Today, as Eric and I pull some shenanigans while we're up here and whatever else happens, God, we hope that people leave and can see you first and last today and that none of us walk out the same as we walked in. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so I know I'm the new kid on the block, so let me give you a little sneak peek behind the curtain of the mythology, the mythos. You have your own mythology. I have my own mythology that is PJ Towel, and I cannot stress enough how true all of this is, and I'm super humble about it, too. So just bringing it up like kind of makes me uncomfortable, but I I do go by PJ. That's just two initials. It's short for Patrick James. I am the fifth of my name, third in line to the Iron Throne and defender of the Nine Realms. Wow. And my mom tells me that I'm an all-around pretty great guy. Yeah, yeah. I rarely sleep and the laws of physics do not apply to me. Oh, my gosh. That was funnier last service. <laughs> uh, I can actually smell color. Did really? you know that? Yes, no. I can. My vision yeah. is so good that I wear these glasses to make it worse. And my beard has been said to have a personality all of its own. That's amazing. It is. I'm allergic to pork, but I'm okay with it because I don't really like bacon, and I really love tacos. You should have like a scribe or someone that comes out and reads this for you before <laughs> like, you ever like do Like announces anything. me yeah. before yeah. I get into a room. That's I'll great. let you guys figure out which ones of those are true, but in all honesty, I see some faces that are like, what's wrong with you? He them? is allergic to pork. I am allergic to pork. Loves that tacos. That is actually true, and I do yeah. love tacos. The rest of it's all made up. Um, <laughs> here's a picture of my family. That's my wife, Angie. Uh, We've been married for coming up on 16 years. Um, She is a school librarian. She's been teaching over here in Carmel for about 12 years, um, which actually prompted us to move over here. I'll talk about that again in a second as well. Um, But those are my two kids. Isaac is 10. Eloise is 7. And yes, before you ask, she is the cutest girl on the planet. She's like a cross between Moana and Rudy Huxtable. So if that, like, reference ages me or dates me, it's okay because I'm still younger than Eric. Uh, um, he's 26, I guess. 26, yeah, yeah, I'm 26. So if we can believe that, that'd be great. Uh, both of my kids are adopted, by the way. So if adoption or infertility are part of your story and you're struggling with that is something that really sucks to go through alone, 
Uh, my wife and I went through all that, and we had decided a long time ago that we are going to be open books about all that kind of stuff. So if you ever want to know, if you ever have questions, you ever want to talk about it, please hit me up. I would love to know uh, how we can help support you with all of that. Um, Twelve years ago, we partnered in planting a church over in Fishers that I was on staff at for a little more than 11 years. Uh, and then right in that 11-year period, we felt like God said, it's time for you to leave this role and move. And I'm not telling you what's next, but you're going to go and you're going to do it and I'm going to bless you. And we went, what? And so we ended up in that time through a whole series of God events, moved over to Carmel, uh, landed here at Mercy Road just in the seats. Um, we were just going to attend. I was ready to not do church work again because we didn't know what God was telling us to do. So totally on this weird step of faith, we moved over here. Landing at Mercy Road has been great for our family, and we're super excited to be here, and I'm glad that you guys are letting me do some of these crazy things that we're involved with, with planting new churches and all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's talk about the real reason, though, that Josh had Eric and I uh, slated to preach today. It's really, truthfully, just because we're the only two brave enough to handle all of these nagging wife passages in Proverbs. Buckle up. Ten-point sermon. It's about to get wild. Yeah. Cue Jillian Maitland with a stick in like three <laughs> seconds. Yeah, I'm going to have to make my own lunch when I get home. Um, oh, there are a lot of nagging wife verses, though. But it's because oh, Solomon had like 700 wives and concubines. Like, oh, of course there yeah, were. I guess. But, but that's, not, that's not where we're actually going today. Just really. side note, Jillian and I read Proverbs every day, like a chapter uh-huh. a day, like we've been for the church, but for Fight Club. And she got so mad after like a week. She's like, there's so many nagging wives verses. Yeah, but, yeah. There, there are a Let's lot. Let's go ahead and preach on that. Yeah, really what we realize though is that there's just a lot of laughter and a lot of joy in Proverbs. And so that's why what we're running after today. Uh, laughter is important to us. It's important in our family. We actually caught my son reading a book on how to prank your siblings yes. the other day. We were like, oh great, All this right. is gonna be awesome. Um, but we actually got his name, by the way, from Genesis 21.6, where uh, you see Abraham and Sarah have just found out that Sarah's pregnant, and it says, God has brought me laughter, and everyone here who hears about this will laugh with me. And that's part of our story. We just laughed hysterically when we found out that we had been chosen for his adoption. It was so much fun, and we laughed so much that it just seemed appropriate to name him that. Um, and so laughter is actually one of the things, too, that connected us with the Mercy Road staff. They are the most sarcastic group of pastors I have ever worked with in my life. And I love it because I don't know if you knew this, but sarcasm is actually really a lesser-known spiritual gift. Um, it's a really important one because it just kind of breaks the ice. And in the book of Hezekiah. It is, but it is. Um, there's also this quote from John Piper that I found this week that I think is important. It says, I believe all men have this in common, that they want to be happy that they do not all agree on what brings the greatest happiness, but they do all long to have it. And this longing is not a bad thing. We all long for happiness, right? Like it's kind of inherent. It's what we're looking for. But I don't think it's just happiness. I think it's joy. I think we're looking for something that brings us joy. So if you walk into a party, are you more likely to go to the group of people that are jovial and happy and laughing and telling jokes? Maybe not the jokes we told earlier, but um, that seem happy, or are you going to go look for that one like solitary lone person who's sitting in the corner and doesn't look like they're having any fun? The most compassionate people in the room would probably go to that person, and I wish I could say that I'm one of them, but I'm not. I tend to look for joy. I look for laughter because laughter is an outward expression of joy. And I think it's normal for us to seek out joy, and I think then, then I think as well when we read it through Proverbs that we can see that joy is a form of wisdom. Um, Real talk here, I've dealt with anxiety and depression. It's landed me in the hospital a couple of times over the last 10 years. Um, And I used humor as a coping mechanism. You can can hide a lot with a laugh. It's not always the most healthy thing. That's another story for another time. Um, But it takes long, hard work to cultivate real joy and to find real joy. And I think when those rough times hit, because they'll hit all of us, finding joy can be really tough, right? There's a wisdom one-liner on this in Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Psalm 94, 19, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. There are a lot of ways to cultivate joy. Jokes or a good word or a good relationship, um, counseling, Uh, maybe it's playing music or seeing a good movie, whatever it is that brings you joy, as long as it's good and it's moral, those are two important things. If they bring you joy, if they're good and they're moral, then I think it's worth cultivating. Because if it's not good and it's not moral, then it's foolishness. Proverbs talks a lot about foolishness too because I think foolishness is just another word for sin. So if we're honest, if we really look at it and we look at what all this foolishness in Proverbs talks about, 
Proverbs is, uses the, uh, some form of the word fool 71 times. In fact, it's used so frequently, I think that there's something just inherently wrong with being a fool uh, because wisdom is set up to steer us away from foolishness by giving us certain parameters. Proverbs 26, 4 in the message, I love the way this says it, don't respond to the stupidity of a fool, you'll only look foolish. Uh, Proverbs 1, 25 and 26 says, since you laugh at my counsel and make a joke of my advice, how can I take you seriously? I'll turn the tables and joke about your troubles, which actually I just read says that it's okay if I laugh when people fall down because, uh, let's be honest, it's hilarious. <laughs> Always <laughs> but, needed a scripture for that. I know, it's, it's my one, it's my oh one my thing gosh. I lean on, but it, really it's yeah. just probably because I'm a bad, a bad person. But yeah. uh, See, I think God really is all about hope. And I think, I think that's what we want to be about here. I think we want to really lean into that because hope can bring joy. But God hopes that we make good decisions. He hopes that we follow right instruction. He hopes that the Cubs will win the 2019 World Series because he wants the best for us. That's just how it goes. Sports thank you. Ball. Thank you. There's some people from Chicago that are here, so I know that's a, that's a good thing. Sports ball. You're a Brewers fan, so you can stop booing. Um, that's why in 31 chapters of all these wisdom one-liners, though, I think on top of all the rest of the wisdom in the Bible, we can see that wisdom brings hope. Proverbs 24, 13 and 14. Eat honey, my son, for it is good. Honey from the comb is sweet to your taste. Know also that wisdom is like honey for you. If you find it, there is a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. I think we could change out hope in those last two lines there and and put joy in place. And we've got that. Know also that wisdom is like honey for you. If you find it, there's a future joy for you, and your joy will not be cut off. I think it's really important for us to see that God has a plan for us to live with hope. It's not always what we're taught to believe. It's not always what we see. For too long, too many people have focused on the, the, the painful, um, judgmental side, punishment side of God, and I don't think that's okay. And if that's you, and that's what you grew up with, and that's what you know, that's what you think about God, you're in the right place today, because we want to turn that perception. If your marriage is falling apart, and you're asking God why it's happening, then you're in the right place today. If you cheated on your taxes, and you feel guilty about it, you're in the right place today. If you flipped somebody off in traffic on the way here this morning, and you don't feel bad about it, you're definitely in the right place today. <laughs> Y'all need Jesus. <laughs> Wisdom says, though, there's hope, Right? Like, all these verses on wisdom set these parameters and shows us that there's a God that hopes for us to follow them and, and live the best life that we can. Eric's going to pick up here in just a second. Uh, but my challenge for each of us today is that whatever our old concept, our old picture of God was, whether it's good or bad, that we'd be able to put it down and we could find a true picture of God. Um, we could let go of those things that are holding us back. We could really experience joy and find real hope in him. That's awesome. Thank you. Can we thank PJ? I had um, a stool last night that Jillian brought from our house, like a little folding stool, so that when we did the face-off, the uh -huh. handoff, I could face you, eye level, you know? And I was like, Jill, why can't I borrow the stool again? She said, I need it, like, every day. <laughs> like, because she, she's short, too. She's very short. short I didn't realize, sh like... Short people are great, though. It was way. pretty funny. I, I couldn't even use the stool to face off at no. this point in the thing, no. but... No, man, I love it. And to, to just pick up from there and to pick up where, where Josh left last week is we were created to leave a legacy. And we want to go a step farther and to say that we were created to enjoy leaving that legacy. Like God actually created you to know the most joy. He, he actually wants to bless you so that you're a blessing. And I think sometimes, you know, like, like you were saying, just changing the way we see God is so important. If you thought that you were coming um, to a church service to just hear a lot of guilt, and shame from an angry God who just wants you to just tuck in your shirt, be serious all the time, because that's what we do at church. You be quiet. You sign the bulletin when it comes by. We had a bulletins at my church you growing up. You had to sign in? Yeah, we signed oh. in, a little checked it. It was pretty cool. Um, I did not go to that church growing up. Yeah, well, we don't have bulletins here. Anyway, th <laughs> this is not... This is not what we're, we're here to talk about. I mean, we, when we look at the father that Jesus revealed, we see this father who loves to get good gifts. And, I, and this is going to throw you off a little bit. He doesn't mind giving the good gifts to those who aren't living this righteous, perfect life. He actually wants to bless you right where you are. So if you came in and you flipped off someone on the way in, Josh is going to love this online. And, you know, and you're like, I'm just not where I should be with God at all. Like not even close. He, he doesn't just want you to 
come and follow him, he actually wants to bless you. Like he's always wanted to do that. It's one of the things I love about Proverbs is it's a different way of saying good and bad, foolishness and righteousness. Did you know you were not created to live with the consequences of, of unrighteous living? It, I've been there. Like I know how hard I looked for joy in those places and I know how much more pain and sadness it brought me. It was crazy. What I thought would bring me joy actually put me in a darker, deeper place. And, and then I all of a sudden have this encounter with Christ in college that changed everything. And so um, it's, it's interesting. Right where you are is God wants, where he wants you to be and where he wants you to come to him. So uh, wisdom of Solomon, I love that it lays that out. Not good and bad, but wisdom and righteousness. I think that's a good, healthy way to look at it. So um, what I want to look at tonight, though, is Jesus... It's the morning. What's that? It's still the morning. We haven't been here that oh, long. Oh, we were here last night doing this. We were. It's written on the teleprompter. Oh. I'm just joking. You just say whatever's on this there. This morning, yeah. Whatever's on there. Um, no, what I, what I love is Jesus had a very different kind of, of wisdom than Solomon. So we'll talk about that in a minute. When we look at John 4, it says this. Jesus says, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. And, and if we kept going on there, it'd say it, it was to do the will of his Father. And then later in John 4, he says, the harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. What joy awaits them. You were created to not be blessed, but to be a blessing. And there's this cycle we're going to talk about here as we, as we wrap up this half of it, that God made Abraham to not just be blessed, although he said you will be blessed. He also said you'll be a blessing, and the nations would be blessed through you. I think that's an incredible cycle that we see at the very beginning of Judaism, even before the law ever came, this idea that God wanted to bless his people so that they would be a blessing, and the nations would be blessed through them, and you're made for it. The same way you're not made to do foolish things because it brings death to relationships, to finances, to your talents. Um, I, I, I have too many friends who have, have gone through addiction. I know what it can do. You're not made for it. You're made for more than that. So what I want to talk about is how the wisdom of Solomon will keep us, um, you know, in a blessed place. We're able to let the blessings come. It's actually going to be the wisdom of Christ that teaches us how to let the blessings flow. So we'll get to that in just a minute. So uh, the difference of wisdom and, uh, of Solomon versus Jesus. Right. I think Solomon's pretty great. Right. And Very wise. Very wise. Definitely read the book. But I do know that joy eludes Solomon because he has this great second book that he wrote. It's a real pick-me-up called mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. it's, so, it's so impactful. I mean, it's, it's more fun to read than Job. It's like, man, <laughs> I want to watch Disney, read Job or Ecclesiastes. Watch Disney. Yeah. Oh. The other two are that complete, complete downers. Okay. Complete downers. Okay. So we know that joy eluded Solomon. He had the wealth. He had the glory, the splendor. He had everything, and he, he had wisdom. And he, so we know that just not only the wisdom of Solomon can unlock your joy. Why is this important? This is important because the measure of your joy is going to change everything about your life. Not just you, the people in your life. We were made to walk in the joy of Christ. And, and it's something that I, I feel like I, there are so many of us that will drink from the well of living water and not experience the joy of Christ. And there is this flow at work that we have to lock into. So if Solomon taught us how to receive the blessings, it will be the wisdom of Christ that's going to take us to the next part of this equation, which is letting the blessings flow through you, to be a vessel of the Holy Spirit, to be a vessel for God. I love it. So I'm kind of cruising through a little different. Sorry, Megan, if you're doing the AV back there. You're doing great. Let's give it up for our tech team. You guys, just, just look over here. Maddie and Megan's daughter, Hallie, is running that camera. That is incredible. They brought their whole fam to handle all of it this week, and I think it's so cool. Um, and they will be blessed because they're a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so here we go. I want to look at Luke 11.31. It says this. Jesus said this. Um, the queen of Sheba will stand up against this generation on judgment day and condemn it. For she came from a distant land to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now someone greater than Solomon is here, but you refuse to listen. So we have to move from the wisdom of Solomon to the wisdom of Christ to experience full joy. But here's um, what I want to talk about are things that can block our joy. And, and, and also just cast an, a, a little bit of an imagination of what joy can look like. When, after college, I went to this great Christian school called Indiana University. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I honestly, I learned about Jesus uh, through uh, Andy Dalton, who discipled me in the fraternity, taught me how to lead a Bible study in and my that, fraternity. That's and, where you got your religion degree too, right? Yeah, yes. right. Yep. Yes. 
all of that. And so after college, I, I went and I had a call to missions happen in my heart towards the end of college. And so I went to India for a year uh, with uh, my first agency and just an eye-opening experience. It was amazing. And when where I was, it was a little less than 1% Christian. So it was very hard to, to be a missionary there. And because of that, we had to have secure email and we would meet people uh, who were also pastors in the city by getting together in, in just small groups and at houses and little places like that. And every time we'd get together with all these pastors from around the city, we only got to see each other, you know, whenever we got together like this. And it was maybe six times that year. This one guy stood out from all the other ones. Because like, if I show you my, my Google weather map, um, it, it says like, unhealthy breathing conditions right now in the place where I was living. So not only is it like 130 degrees, you got, you're just breathing smog all the time. I mean, physically it's hard. Spiritually it's hard. It's discouraging. I have culture shock, uh, miss my family, all this. So I wasn't in a good place. But every time we hung out with these guys, this one missionary, his name was John, was always happy. Like stood out like a sore thumb. Always happy. And I don't know if, you, if you've traveled much, you'll notice that Coke tastes different in different countries. Coke tastes so much better in Mexico. It does. And now that I say that out loud, I should say that Coca-Cola tastes better in Mexico. You got that. That's good. It sounds really funny. You guys to have say had your coffee today. I didn't even catch it. Yeah, Coca-Cola. <laughs> Just make sure Josh is watching this. Um, Pepsi tastes the same. Pepsi, red, white, and blue. America, it's going to taste the same everywhere you go. I couldn't remember which one tasted consistent. So I asked this guy, John, we're at this little missionary pastor's huddle thing. And I'm like, hey, John, um, which one is, it tastes the same everywhere? Because that's what I want. And he goes... Oh, I don't know, brother. All I know is Jesus is coming back soon, and I can't wait. Don't you love being around those people? Oh, my gosh. How are you today, John? Blessed and highly favored. That's no, Josh Hoosman right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. He is that guy. He just could not be happier about anything that's going I, I can't believe it. So I eventually asked him, can we have coffee sometime? I just want to learn about your story, and why are you like this? And he said, when I asked him how he kept his joy in a hard place, he said, I get up in the morning, every morning, and I waste my time on Jesus. So good. Just waste it on him. He said, I used to do everything under the sun and ask God to bless it. But I wake up every morning, I just waste my time on Jesus. And if he puts something on my heart to do, I'll, I'll do that first, you know. And I thought that was very reverse. We need to hear it like that as Americans, because we do feel like it's a waste of time to to spend time in God's presence. And I'm telling you, the wisdom of Christ will show us that you will not experience the joy, the fruits of the Spirit, the strength, the anointing of the Father, any of this, you will not experience it apart from God. You, you can't just make Christianity into an equation. I did Proverbs, right? I'm doing wisdom versus foolishness and right versus wrong. There's more than that. It, we have to spend time with our Father. So here we go. Barriers that keep us from experiencing the flow that we should be experiencing, which is letting the blessings come and letting the blessings flow. You're made for this. And we as a church care a lot about all of us being on mission. This is not for us to get all energized and stay in ministry. Oh, pray for us. We're in ministry. Y'all are called to be in ministry. You all are called to have a ministry. God's gifted you and wired you and designed you in a way to do what only you can do. And, and if there's an outpost that God is calling you to start, we want to help you do that. If there's already an existing ministry you're a part of, we want to help you do that. But we all have to do this together, and we need the joy of the Lord to be our strength. We are, uh, right now, Jillian and my nonprofit that we do when we're not here, we're working uh, to help the biggest drug epidemic that America's ever faced. There is plenty of depression and anxiety and suicide happening right now in our state, right now in our city. We need joy. This is so important. So what barriers will keep you from it? The first is living in foolishness. We got to let the blessings come. God called you and created you to experience his blessings. But when we live outside of his order, when we live outside of his commands, there just are consequences to that. And you weren't made to do that. And I have to say this. I, I forgot my little frog, PJ. But anytime it? Oh, there it is. we're going to receive wisdom, we got to have something like this. Um, my, first, um, my first tour as a musicianary with uh, GTM, the missions agency I was with for 10 years with Jillian, um, our first tour was to Russia. And we spent a month there doing music outreach and church planting with Mission Possible. And at the end, our translator, Vadim, said, Eric, I want you to have this. And I'm like, wow, thanks, Vadim. What is it? A frog with a banjo. It's a you frog can't see with that. like a banjo, it looks like. And he said, I just want you to hold on to this because you are so green. I mean. It's like a backhanded I compliment. Mean, yeah. 
Like in a second language, he burned me so deep. <laughs> you are so green. We will not be able to hear what God is going to speak to us today if we don't have humility, if we don't have a teachable heart. And so, you know, this, this first one, living in foolishness, this is one of the patterns of what we see in Proverbs. So what are some symptoms of those who are living in foolishness? Uh, easily offended, they're quarrelsome, uh, not open to counsel, they're led by sinful desires. It, either hanging out with the wrong crowd, you know, the fire chief of Fisher said, your pack is holding you back. It's so cheesy, but I'll never forget it. I would say it to someone who's eight, and I'd say it to somebody who's 80. You need to be in healthy community. Symptoms from those who are living foolish lives. Uh, they can't hold on to jobs or opportunities. Um, they've slipped through their fingers. Never-ending problems with family, finances, cars, etc. Moral failure can fall in their addiction. Um, these are just symptoms, and it's not, I'm not saying that's the only thing that causes those, but if that's happening a lot in your life, you might just want to say, hey, that's kind of something I can identify with. What are some remedies to that? Remedies would be the wisdom of Solomon. Read Proverbs. Read the wisdom books of the Bible. They're excellent for teaching you God's Word and how to live a wise life so that the blessings of God can come because He's desiring to bless you. Seek a good mentor. It's one of the best things I've ever done is seek wise mentors who and, and to open my heart, ask God for humility so you can hear them. And recovery, the community, the recovery community of America is million strong. Some of my favorite people in the world, they, they own their own stuff and they become mentors right away um, to the next generation. I mean, they're incredible people. Um, healthy community is such a big part. The second barrier, though, that I don't think we th would consider a barrier is those who live in wisdom and abundance. This is another barrier to joy. So if the problem with living in uh, foolishness is that the blessings can't come. The problem with living in wisdom and abundance sometimes is that the blessings can't flow. Right. We spend so much time and energy maintaining and acquiring all of these blessings from God. You know, the Old Testament, a lot of times blessings look like this, land, wealth, and family. You know, the guy who mobilized me to missions, he said the three things that hold people back from the mission field are the blessings of God. We have so much that we have to maintain. I can't let this this great career go, or this land go, or this house that the family's had forever, or, or my kids, I got to get them through. I know. It, and it's great. They're all blessings. They're good. They're good, but we're made to be a blessing. We're made for the flow to happen. So as we look at what the symptoms can be, if you've been living in a place where you've got righteousness and wisdom down, but this is happening maybe. Distrusting of God and others self-protection. I can't give to this poor guy because I'm pretty sure he's got an addiction. Last thing I'm going to do is buy somebody drugs. I'm not going to give to that poor person because they're probably, they got some scam they've been doing all day and I'm not going to give into it. You know, and we protect ourselves and our resources from people who God may have put in front of us with a need. I'm not saying don't be shrewd with your giving, but give. You were created for it. It's as much for you as it is for them. Um, judgmental spirit. You know, I, I, this guy, he doesn't work as hard as me. I would never let him have a, uh, this used car of mine because he probably wouldn't steward it as well. I, I can't find, you can't find your purpose. Discontentment is there. Fear and anxiety may drive you to work so hard that you can navigate calamities. But you know what? God in his mercy will sometimes let you go through a season of less or very little so that you draw near to him. It is often that what can keep you from joy is living in wisdom and abundance, guys. And so what do we need? We need the wisdom of Christ. We need surrender. Surrender is such a hard word. We need to cling to the teachings of Christ. We need to maybe spend a season studying the lordship of Christ, fear of the Lord, intentional time with God. Waste your time on Jesus. So what I want to do, thank you for letting us do this. Uh, what I want to do is, as a church family, to just spend some time listening to the wisdom of Christ. We've spent all month listening to the wisdom of Solomon. I want us as a church family, as we respond, we're just going to spend some time listening to the wisdom of Christ. And you know, something the Lord put in my heart was that I'm going to say a lot of things to a lot of people. All you got to do is just, you know, remind them that I'm speaking. Remind them that I want to bless. Remind them that I want them to be a blessing but he's going to speak something specifically to you, I believe, as we spend time as a church family just listening to the voice of our master. So I'm going to have Maddie and those guys just dim the lights and let's, let's make this a time of, of worship. We don't do this very often where we just read scripture together. Father, speak to us. Matthew 13 says this, listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. The seed sown along the path, the seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone 
who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The, season fall, or the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Wow. John 15, one of my favorite places in the Bible. This is after Jesus washed everyone's feet. They had their last supper. Judas has already betrayed him. And now he's going to have some final teachings with his with the remaining 11 before he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. And I could read this part of the Bible all the time. It's only in the book of John. It's like 14 through 16, I think. But this is from 15. It says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. And so prove to be my disciples, just as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. And the brother of Jesus said this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. When's the last time you've actually asked God for wisdom? It's not something we ask God for usually. We ask for money. We ask for a lot of things. Let's ask him for his wisdom today. I, uh, I just want to end with a final story at the end of the, that year in India that I spent. I was asking God what I was supposed to do next with my life. And I mean really asking him what I should do next. And, and I was praying. I actually tried fasting. I wasn't very good at fasting but I fasted for like a week with probably heavy juices and high calorie energy drinks. But I fasted and I was asking God, what do you want me to do with my life? And finally, I felt like I was asking for wisdom. I was asking for guidance. I felt like he gave it, but it wasn't an answer. He said, you're asking the wrong question. I want you to ask me who you're supposed to submit yourself to, to mentor you, to disciple you. That changed everything. That's a very different question. And it was because of that question and that wisdom that God gave me changed the trajectory of my entire life. Will you stand with me and let's just respond to our Lord as we come together and ask for his wisdom. I want us to just be able to have a covenant moment together. And so if you're, if you're new here today, I want to give you a chance to just start this journey. If you're like, you know, I've I've actually kind of been to church a couple times. I've read the Bible. I've talked religion with friends, but I've never tried following this Jesus guy that you're talking about. I want to give you a chance to start that today. That's the first step in the journey is to ask Jesus to come into your heart, to forgive you, to make you new, and to trust him with your life. So let's bow our heads. And if that's you today and you're ready to take that first step and to step into the life and the blessings that he has for you, I want to ask you, to raise your hand at this time, and I'm going to pray with you, and we're going to have a covenant moment with God today. If that's you today, awesome. Awesome. Anyone else? If you want to start that journey today, let's just, got it. Okay, thanks. You don't have to keep your hands up. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Just pray this with me. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for pursuing me. You fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law that I could not. You paid the price for me so that I could experience eternity with you. I believe that you're the Son of God. 
I believe that you died, that you bore my sin upon that cross, and that you rose again after three days, proving your victory over death. And I receive your forgiveness. I receive the new life that you offer. And I ask that you would lead me, that you would teach me. I want to be your disciple. Amen. Please fill out, um, please put that on a connect card today. If that's a the decision that you just made and you prayed that prayer with me. That's awesome. Thank you. And for the rest of us in the room, we need another covenant moment. And that is for us to undo the breakage, whatever has kept that flow from working, whatever has kept us from joy, whether it's been we have not been willing to submit ourselves to the wisdom of Solomon to realize that, you know what? God's ways are better. I was not made to deal with the kind of consequences of my bad actions. I want to give us a chance to, to start surrendering that. And then the other is that if you have been living that, a oh, oh, life of wisdom and righteousness, but that has become something where it's just, it's kept you from being able to step out and be a blessing. I want you to have a chance to respond as well. So we're going to bow our heads again. And whatever it is you have to surrender to God today, if in the reading of that scripture or the time PJ and I talking, I just want you to raise your hands, palms up. You don't have to put them high, but just receive we're going to receive God's blessing. And I want this for everyone in the room. So if we all want to do it together, let's do it. As a church family, we need to have moments like this where we surrender back to God. Lord, we confess that we have put things between us and you. You desire to bless us so much that we're a blessing, that the nations would be blessed through us. But God, we have let our own foolishness or our own our own fear or concern that you can't provide, God, that we have to keep accumulating more and more wealth to protect ourselves. Like we've, we've, God, we've missed out on the bigger picture. We've missed out on your wisdom, Jesus. So we surrender, God, both our foolishness and our righteousness to you. God, thank you for blessing us. We want to be a blessing as a church family. And I ask right now, Holy Spirit, that you would begin giving us your wisdom this season. Begin speaking to us, God. Show us what it is you want us to do, Lord. God, we trust you. And everything that we've put between us and you, we put it on the altar today. We want you to be exalted in our lives. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen.